Hey everyone, over the years I've come up with 10 different workshop hacks and tips to help make a small workspace like this easier to work in. It also helps to keep the shop clean and uncluttered and helps me to keep my bikes clean and running smooth. If you stick around to the very end, I'll have one more tip which I think you'll find pretty helpful. Stick around. This bench top work stand gets used every single day. 90% of the time, it just holds the bike that I rode last. I normally just loosely hang the seat post and the clamp with the front wheel on the ground, but it's plenty strong to be able to use in any position to work on the bike. I bought this stand for $35 on Amazon, and I did a video on it, and I'll include a link in the description. One simple way to be able to secure the handlebar to keep it from moving around when it's on the work stand is this section of elastic cord. I tied a loop on each end and in the middle is a double cord lock like you would have on a stuff sack. It's easy to adjust and it's real simple. Another method to keep the handlebar in place is something similar I've seen in bike shops. I took a 36 inch piece of 1 8 inch steel rod and inserted it into some 3 16 inner diameter vinyl tubing. I left the tubing just a little long so I can trim it afterwards. Then it's just a matter of bending and shaping to get it to fit the bike that you want to put it on. After about 10 or 15 minutes, you should have something that works pretty well. I think most people have some kind of a workbench or tabletop in their shop, but for me it always ended up collecting a lot of stuff. And whenever I needed to use the actual bench for bench things, uh, it took me 10 minutes just to clean it off. So I added this really small shelf underneath and it's kind of tucked in but it's got access to all the things that I need to use most days. So uh, most of the small tools, wrenches, screwdrivers, uh, some lubes, and uh, chain lubes. This has probably done the most to kind of help organize and keep uh, clutter out of my way. Of course, everybody needs a manual machine. But for today's video, the purpose is it always holds my second bike and even though it's pretty big uh, you'll notice that when it's tucked up next to my table saw and outfeed table it actually doesn't take up very much room. It's really sturdy and it makes a handy place to do cockpit adjustments or even work on your dropper post. This is my DIY Scorpion bike stand. Um, I like the idea of the Scorpion, but uh, at 80 bucks I knew I could probably make something uh, functional for a lot less and this was about $18 for uh, all the uh, iron parts. I already had this. So this is two pieces of three quarter inch uh, plywood uh, screwed together, a piece of one and a half inch uh, pressure treated, which I screwed to the bottom in order to uh, give it an angle so that when the bike sits on this, if you're turning the cranks, the bike will want to kind of ride off the end, so this kind of keeps it on there. Um, important thing is this floor flange, uh, make sure you don't use screws, but actually uh, use bolts to go all the way through, otherwise when it gets wet, the screws will probably pull out. So everything's half inch black pipe, uh, floor flange, uh, 12 inch, a 90 degree coupling, half inch by four inch, half inch to three eighths, 
reducer and a six inch piece of three eighths black pipe. And then I just wrapped in two places some Gorilla Tape to bring the diameter up to enough so that it fits snug uh, inside of the hollow bottom bracket, which I think is like 20 or 21 millimeters. So it works great. Um, it's fantastic for uh, working on a dropper post where you can't use your bike stand. Uh, and I use it mostly for washing my bikes. Uh, that way I can uh, put it up there. I'm not having to flip the bike upside down or uh, try to prop it up against something and have it get uh, knocked over when I'm washing it. This next tip will help you to be able to clean your bike better by having the rear wheel off of the bike. So I know you can buy these, but I made this uh, little um, gear idler pulley thing. So it's a, a piece of half inch plywood with some plexiglass on the sides. And I just used a, a hole cutter with uh, it was a two inch hole cutter to make the, uh, the actual inner part and a two and a half inch hole cutter to make the outsides. Uh, I glued the inside one so it's flush. I screwed the outside one. Um, you can take your wheel off, throw your axle through this, put your chain on it, and that way you can use your chain cleaner to uh, run the chain. You can actually get to the back of the jockey wheels, which I think is really, really hard to do with the wheel on the bike. And you can also really thoroughly get at the, the rear cog and not worry about getting degreaser into the hub. So you can kind of be a little more careful and get a little more thorough at it. So let's see what it looks like on the bike. Anybody who's tried to maneuver a bike around a tight space knows that front wheel has got a mind of its own and it can get damaged. My simple solution is I took a two foot piece of paracord, put a loop on the end, and then I just use a really, really quick half hitch to secure the wheel to the down tube. It's quick to tie and really quick to untie and keeps everything nice and secure. If your space has a garage door, the rails make a really handy place to store all of your extra hydration bladders. It's also where I choose to air dry my pads and gloves after they've been washed. Before, all I had was a bunch of shelves along this wall and everything was kind of cluttered and out in the open. And one of the things that I do is I'll go ahead and keep all of my biking stuff, cleaning supplies, more cleaning supplies, shoes, box of tools I don't use very often. And then this one container, which has all of my pads, gloves, helmet, and some various things like sunglasses. So this keeps things organized and out of the way. Hey, I appreciate you sticking around. Now, I'll give you that uh, final tip that I mentioned in the beginning. When's the last time you had to redo a brake housing and you had your really nice cable housing cutters and you went ahead and did the cut? And afterwards, you can't even see where the cable's supposed to go. Now, you gotta spend 20 minutes with an awl and a file and try to dig this thing out and it still may drag on the cable. So what do you do? Make sure you got a piece of coat hanger that's a little longer than the piece of uh, housing that you're cutting. Feed it in, push it in till it gets all the way, comes out the other end. So make sure you have some sticking out both sides. Now take your, your nice specialty cutters and give it a quick 
clip. And once you're done, you're left with a nice clean hole that takes a lot less work to get it cleaned up. Well, that's all I've got for now. Did I miss anything? Go ahead and leave it in the comments section. If you like this, please go give me a thumbs up. If you've got a friend who you think could benefit from this because their shop could use some help, go ahead and share it with them. And if you're like me and just refuse to act your age, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching.